All right, so now we're going to look at a slightly trickier example. We're going to look at the antiderivative for secant. And by the way, I, I'm, I'm not going to bother with antiderivatives for, for cotangent or for cosecant. The approaches for those are very similar, right? If you want to do the cotan one, mimic what we've done for tan. Um, it's a good exercise, so I think I can leave it for you to try on your own. Similarly, once we've done the secant example, you should be able to kind of follow the, the procedure that we use here and, and adjust it to do the integral for cosecant. So, the trouble with this one is there, there is no obvious way to proceed, right? You could write secant as 1 over cos, but then you have cosine in the, de in the denominator. There's nothing in the numerator, right? So you could try to substitute cos, but um, when you do your du, right, there's no sine x in the, in the numerator to, to let you do that substitution. So you can't pull off a substitution as is, which is a little bit annoying. Um, so you start playing around um, and this is, you know, this is one that I think probably went unsolved for a while. This is, I mean, um, of the various trig integrals, I'm guessing that this one, people didn't pull this out of, you know, come up with this right away. Um, so what you do is, is you play around a little bit and you, you think about the derivatives of secant, right? So the derivative of secant, we know that that's secant x times tan x. And we know that the derivative of tan is secant squared, right? Secant times secant, right? So the trick is realizing that you can add these two together, right? So what you can do is you can say, well, the derivative of secant x plus tan x, okay, well we just have to add these. So it's secant x tan x plus secant squared x, and we can factor out secant. Okay, all right, so how does that help? Well, what we do is we realize that, okay, you know what, we just have secant here and we can't do much with that by itself. But if we had, you know, secant x tan x plus, you know, or if we had secant squared, we'd be in business, right? So you should start thinking about like, what if you, what if you multiplied and divided by tan? If you did secant times tan over tan, no, that doesn't quite work, right? What if you multiply by secant? Secant over secant doesn't quite work. Um, but the sum of the two turns out that's the trick, okay? So what we do is we say, well, look, this is the same thing as doing secant x times secant x plus tan x divided by secant x plus tan x, right? We can multiply and divide by that sum. And this is useful because now the derivative of the bottom, right? The derivative of secant plus tan is secant squared plus secant x tan x. We have it sitting right there, okay? So now you're set up. Now you can do that derivative. Now you can say, okay, I'm going to let u equal to secant x plus tan x so that du is secant x tan x plus secant squared x times dx. <coughs> and we realize that we have it sitting right here, right? If we multiply out the top, this is secant squared. This is secant times 10. So there we go. That's du. We're in business. This is now just 1 over u times du, just like that. All right? We know what to do for now. That's a natural log. 
and we substitute back in u with secant x plus tan x plus c. And you've got it, right? So this one is, you know, this is certainly not meant to be obvious. This is not something that you should assume that anyone could just come up with, you know, if you thought about it for five minutes. No. Um, this is, is a more difficult integral. This, you know, there's a trick, right? There's this trick involved. You've got to multiply and divide by something, and it's not something you would necessarily come up with right away. Um, so somewhere along the way, somebody made this realization. They figured it out, and everyone was happy. But, uh, you know, this is not immediately clear. Now that we have it, of course, we're good to go. Right? So again, the cotan and the, and the cosecant ones are similar approaches, and now we have antiderivatives for all six trig functions. Next step is to look at what do you do when they show up in combinations.